Hello, got another video for you. Uh, seems like I put up none or a bunch at one time. Um, I wanted to cover one special item that I found. Uh, if you remember, I think a couple weeks ago, if you watch all the videos. <laughs> um, I went to town one day to buy a crank telephone, nice wooden 1890s to 1905 type of wooden phone. Um, it would have been originally in this house. Uh, the phone was actually used in service in a house in town up until 1920 uh, when they took it down for a more modern phone, finding out about it just a little bit more. I'm repairing one part of it. I'll show that once I've gotten the repair done for the receiver part. But what I wanted to look at, this item was in the back of the car, and we, of course, since we were there buying, asked, hey, how much do you want for those? So we got this and... Uh, a kerosene can for twenty dollars. Now the kerosene can is nice, but it's uh, you know pretty common. Uh, these sometimes are common. You can find them, but I'm going to show you how complete this is. Uh, this is a Lisk, L-I-S-K lunch pail. Uh, all the research I've done on these shows them from 1860s uh, being used even up until the 20s, and I can see uh, the ones used in the, uh, after. The 1800s were of a different style. Uh, I looked up several different styles of these. Uh, I could I could say by the tin work uh, on this that it is from 18 1860s period. I would say all the way up to 1890, if you want to get you know uh, down to biz brass tacks on this. Uh, it has one spot of damage, which is right here, a dent. And you know, for being as old as it is, I think it's done very well. Now, I don't know if you remember the first time you saw this, it had a lot of red dust, uh, red rust in it. Uh, I couldn't get the lid off. I wasn't sure how complete it was. I bought it just out of the sheer coolness of it uh, and liking antique things. This has the, the wire handle with a wooden, wooden grip on it. Uh, very nicely worn. You can see nothing extensive. Uh, no chips, no nicks. There's a few scratches, no gouges really. This was well taken care of, um, with the exception of its latter part of its life where it was allowed to rust. Um, but that just gives it character to patina on it. It's always very nice. Now, what I did with this, and I didn't make a video of it. I'm going to start doing these uh, restoration videos. This wasn't a restoration really. It was a uh, slight restoration to keep it from degrading any further. I could not get the lid off. So what I did is I used some of my weapons oil that... Uh, Clean grime and dirt off. Very few uh, went around the ring of it, let it set. I, I took it outside and I kind of just tapped very lightly with a uh, rubber mallet. And what I do is I cover those with a suede leather uh, cover to keep it from denting and, and marring the surfaces. So I was able to get everything apart. Now, of course, we'll start at the top here. Still a little rough, but I'm not going to clean it anymore. Now, this was just like a handle part, okay? Maybe catch some of the extra liquid that was in the cup if you put it away without really drying it. Now, the, you got your uh, tin cup. And this is like not really a pewter tin, but there is a little bit more pewter content in it than there would be into a 1920s piece. Um, you can always tell that just by the color of of the interior and they made sure and coated that and some I'm sure it's pretty toxic at the time still is I wouldn't use this uh, coating you can see how it goes down the original galvanization on the bottom um, that was so you could put just about anything in it and not really get poisoned from it uh, there's a uh, little dent right there by my finger uh, no deep gouges you can see this nice patina on it you can see the greenish type finish in the bottom now see originally when I bought this Thought it was a, a military, like an older German, uh, you know, for, for the field a mess kit, but it's not. <laughs> um, and you can see some of the original finishes on here. Now, what I did is I took some soap and water and uh, a scrub brush, and I just scrubbed on it, and I. Uh, Dried it off really good, and I heated it up just a little bit. Put it in the oven at, like, say, 45, you know, 45 degrees. <laughs> it was really low. Uh, the lowest setting I can get my oven on. 
and I let it dry out completely. And that drew out all the oil and all the, you know, for everything I used the soap and water and stuff, and a little bit of alcohol, denatured alcohol, and it cooked all the oils out of it. And then I applied just a very slight bit of beeswax, and that's going to keep it from uh, rusting any further. It stopped everything. Some people disagree with that, but I take care of my cast iron pots and pans, or pans with that very well. I say pots, cauldrons, um, and I have. Now, let's move on, because I've rambled too much about this. It's hard to do this with one hand. So, the lid does come off. There we are. There we go. There's the lid. Now, see, I've got to clean the inside again. Now, see, you would set this upside down. And you could put some type of food item in there, maybe bread or whatever. Yeah, I got to go back over that because I wasn't sure how that was going to come out. But I got to get all that out so it doesn't eat through the galvanized metal. And then, uh, I think I took the top off it. I can't remember. And uh, it has this other container. And these fit together pretty snug. And I gotta finish cleaning out that too because it just settled back down in there. But still, now that's the original color. This is what it should look like on the outside. And this just caught some moisture. And I, I kind of knew I didn't get it out good. I'm gonna have to clean it again just to get that out. I don't have to get any of the stains out, but you see that'll start flaking. Now you look at this and you think that's all it does. And anybody who offers these for sale, you're only gonna find, excuse me, let me move my glasses out of the way here. You're only gonna find. This, 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 and this, okay? Um, but we go a little bit more, and here is the part that's missing out of 95%. Excuse me, just for a moment. That's a little bit bigger. 95% of these are missing this. This is a bigger container. This is like soup. You can actually cook in this. Uh, then you got your main container. And see that just rot, having trouble with that rust. And I've got to, I've got to get that all cleaned out of there, just because that's very unattractive, at least to me. I'm not keeping this. I'm going to sell it. Um, and we're going to get into what it is in just a moment. But see, you just put it all together. However, you'd pack your lunch. You know what I'm saying? When you're going to get in a fight with somebody, pack your lunch. <laughs> that's probably what they were talking about right here. Because this holds a lot. I have a whole lot of food. I know if I was working with uh, what this was generalized as being used for, I'd be hungry. Now, saying these are 1890s, they are calling this two things. First, it's a miner's lunch pail. Uh, the miners they're referring to usually are coal miners with this. It was just popular, I guess, with the coal miners. Uh, and then, from what I'm gathering, this was used by a gold miner or a copper miner. If he was here locally in the Sierra Nevadas, there's copper deposits. And there are a couple copper mines up here. Uh, now, if they, uh, I would love to trace this to Virginia City. Uh, then I would keep it. <laughs> I might go back and talk to the owners again, or former owners. But... Uh, those two types of miners, uh, three types of miners, but miners in general, is is what I am told use these. Um, there's also a uh, another description of this is in railroad man's uh, lunch pail. Maybe the engineer, maybe a brakeman. You know, the guys rode the cabooses. Well, I think they had ways to make food back there, and they wouldn't have done it. I don't know how they would have done it. I didn't work in one. But see, locally, there was uh, a railroad that went from Flatlands down in Fresno all the way up into the Sierra Nevadas here up to the uh, lumber and mining camps. Um, and then all the way up into Yosemite through the valley floor. It was called the SJ&E Railroad. Uh, the, the nickname for it was Slow, Jerky, and Expensive. And, you know, up here, they didn't save any cost making our roads. <laughs> and they just poured the uh, asphalt right over the old train tracks because those were very uh, well-used trails. 
So there's still remnants of that up here. I mean, I, I hate to classify it as those three things only, you know, being the, the types of miners and railroad, because this could have been used by uh, somebody working. If they were local, everybody worked up here with lumber. There were lumber operations. There was a smaller town up in Shaver Lake area that's now at the bottom of Shaver Lake. Uh, there are some places up here from the San Joaquin Valley uh, Power Association that's up here um, that worked up here. Toll House Electric. There was a lot of hydroelectric activity up here. Uh, we have a lot of powerhouses. We have a lot of dams and a lot of electrical upper pg &Es up here now. So this very well could have been, you know, a lumberman's lunch pail or anybody who worked outdoors um, or even in a factory. But this is going to be for sale. I will be listing this after I get the inside and I cleaned up a little bit more. Uh, the outside staying as it is. Uh, but I'm going to be putting about $185 on this. And I anticipate the sale uh, very quickly in this area. I'm going to list it locally. Anybody's interested in it, uh, say so in the statements uh, in the uh, in the comments. And you can shoot me an email. I'll put it in the uh, description. And uh, if you're interested in it, we can work on a deal. But uh, at least $185. Uh, i have seen them for $200 and more. And uh, like I said, it's going to be lo listed here locally. Or I might just put it up on my shelf and wait for um, COVID restrictions to list a little bit, uh, lift a little bit more. Then I can have it at an antique sale in town. And probably walk away with, you know, making a deal with somebody at least $100. I couldn't part with it for less than that. Just because of rarity and just because uh, I kind of like it myself. And uh, there's going to be another video on that, depending on which one goes first. But look for that one too. And then I got my tool, uh, my, uh, uh, what do you call it back there? Tackle box, a bunch of tackle in it. But uh, for this... You know, again, I like to show things that aren't seen all the time. You might not see one of these out at a sale. You might not see one on Marketplace. You might not, you know. Sure, you can find anything on eBay. And if you look, if you Google it, you can see it. But in a regular video and someone's private, you know, collection temporarily, uh, it's nice to see. Kind of learn a little bit about them. There's more research I could do about it, but... Just for the general interest of showing what should be inside of these, um, you know, this serves a good purpose for it. What to look for with it. Uh, don't ever strip them all the way down the bare metal. It loses value. I just took care of uh, the rust that was going to damage it more, which is fully acceptable. Don't remove the dents. You know, there's a little bit of paint on this from somewhere. That's part of its history, part of its life, so leave it. Um, of course, a new owner can do as they please, but just, uh, I always like leaving things the way they are. This piece of history, and it, most likely it's a piece of local history, uh, for where I come from here. And, uh, once again, it's Lisk, L-I-S-K. Could you imagine the mines this could have been in if it was used, uh, in the coal mining regions or even up here in the copper mines? Um... You know, uh, further in the coast, we had mercury mines, but those, those would have been mined differently. Even just think if this somehow was in the Comstock, you know, uh, that would make it, oh man, like I said, I, I wouldn't give it up for anything because uh, that's my favorite place in the world is Virginia City, Nevada. But um, so there it is in all of its vintage glory. And, uh, if you like this video and you're not subscribed, please hit the thumbs up button, hit that bell icon, subscribe, hit the bell icon so uh, you can get uh, updates on some videos. Uh, I'm going to be doing a little bit more. Uh, next month is going to be my month to shine. But uh, just want to do a little bit. I'm still out here and I'm still making videos. They come sporadically, but uh, they're going to be coming more often. So with that, I'm going to look for something else to make a video out of tonight. And uh, I want you all to stay safe, uh, and I'll see you all down the road.